we start our first scientific session of the day with neonatal dermatosis a panorama by dr sandipandhar professor and head of pediatric dermatology at the institute of child health kolkata over to you sir thank you very much arpita uh, good afternoon dear colleagues and friends i'm going to start with neonatal dermatosis a panorama basically uh, you know uh, this presentation is made keeping in mind that old and uh, gold golden saying that a picture speaks thousand words so it will be basically a, an atlas of neonatal dermatosis i'm sure that all of you will uh, you know enjoy it in between i might you know make it little bit interactive but i won't uh, you know wait for much because the time is limited as uh, this particular thing is very scary for me and uh, i give lot of respect to this so i shall be as brief as possible it will be all photographs very important thing is that skin of a baby is much different from the adults in a way that most important thing for all practical purpose for therapy for uh, you know neonatal dermatosis or pediatric dermatosis is that when you are applying something please do remember that the body surface area has a much higher in compared to weight so unit uh, area of absorption is much more than the adult so particularly for corticosteroid containing preparations and diaper area is an area under occlusion lot of absorption from there occurs for diaper dermatitis you should be careful about using corticosteroids now some of the physiological skin changes as you can see here uh, where is the pathology or the diagnosis yes suckling blisters excellent who said that oh excellent so this is suckling blister the pathology is here and it is it occurs internally but it presents in uh, neonatal age and not only the lips you can see suckling blisters over the knuckles you can see it over the wrist you can see over the elbow you can see over the knee over the ankle so all the places suckling blisters you can see so only thing all this neonatal physiological changes most important thing is the reassurance of the parents and for us the dermatologists particularly pediatric dermatologists is reassuring the parents as well as reassuring the pediatrician colleagues also at times what is this neonatal acne excellent so this is neonatal acne because of the maternal androgen hormone inside the baby which takes some time 4 to 6 weeks to completely get you know metabolized in the system so that 4 to 6 weeks you have to just counsel the parents maybe if it is very severe and the parents are also doing lot of anxiety then you can give uh, you know 2.5% benzoyl peroxide topical application what are these anyone Yes, milia, neonatal milia. So here also the things resolve within uh, you know two to three months by and large. It can be like this. So most important thing is counseling, counseling, and counseling. So this is very very important. This is neonatal occipital alopecia. This is my own picture. You can see the parents. This is the Institute of Child Health room. right so if you see it someone else's books front cover picture don't believe it that it has been and think that it has been uh, you know taken from me without my permission and without my acknowledgement unfortunate though <clears throat> this is basically has got nothing to do kiran is smiling this is dr kiran godsev you know god of atopic dermatitis in india right so we are very happy and privileged to have him with us as a faculty so uh, neonatal occipital alopecia has got nothing to do with a pillow concept 
and many a times the grandmas they advise the instead of a cotton pillow give a mustard seeds pillow and all these things we have been hearing from our MBBS days or postgraduate days. So this is basically occipital hair remains in catagen phase in the last trimester of pregnancy and after birth of the baby that goes into uh, you know telogen phase that goes into catagen phase. So the hair falls but they grow again. So it is a physiological changes which has got a solid science behind it and change your pillow from cotton to mustard seed and blah 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 that doesn't really help. So this type of exfoliation, what is the diagnosis? So don't jump to make a diagnosis of, you know, ichthyosis. This is very common, particularly post-mature babies. This is neonatal physiological exfoliation. So this is also going to subside on its own within few weeks, right? And you don't have to do anything except just use bland moisturizer containing white soft paraffin and liquid paraffin. So when you see this baby with this type of rash, I'll show you some more pictures. Aethematous papular lesions. Most of the time the parents become very psyche and the, you know many of our pediatrician colleagues also, they become you know very nervous. What is it? It is because of septicemia or infection or anything. By and large, 90% of cases, let me tell you that it is nothing to do with, it has got nothing to do with any infection or septicemia. Still, if you have doubt, just take a smear from a papule and just stain it and see under the microscope. If you see that there are plenty of eosinophils, you know the diagnosis. If it is infection, there will be neutrophils. And the diagnosis is, name is very toxic. Right? Toxic erythema of the newborn, but the condition is not toxic. Right? So, basically, counseling is very important because sometimes, very occasionally, it can be a manifestation of septicemia, but that is one in 10,000 maybe. But by and large, it disappears by three to four weeks' time. And it appears usually within seven to eight days after birth in some babies. What is this? Very common. You won't get such picture in western books. So this is neonatal milliaria, right? Because of hot and humid weather in tropical climate. So this is another variant of milliaria in newborn when the particularly the baby is in, in the bed for a long time, that sweat secretion does not get dissipated. So as a result, you see this crystalline you know, appearance of the blisters. I am giving you the lot of clue. You won't get it, such clues in KBC. You, are, you have to ask for a, can I ask my friend or something like that. Right? So, I don't see KBC, but I used to remember those previous days. Calling a friend and all these things. Your friends are all there around you. You can ask anyone. Welcome Dr. Ram Gulati from Jaipur. He's one of our faculty. Nice to see you, Ram. So this is neonatal milliaria crystallina. Now coming to the diseases of the newborn. From physiological, we are going to pathological. What is this? Yes, everybody now is bubbling. So good sensi digestion at the beginning, isn't it? So people know more pathological conditions than physiological things. That is very important to know physiological things so that, so that you can make a clear demarcation margin. So this is a, you know, you can see nice, you know, uh, erythematous polypoidal mass in the umbilicus. The, this is known as umbilical polyp, right? I'll show you another beautiful picture, umbilical polyp. And basically, you have to do an investigation, send the baby to a pediatric gastroenterologist to rule out vital intestinal drug or a Meckel's diverticulum. That is very, very important. In that case, you have to do an excision with the help of a, gastro, uh, a pediatric gastro, uh, you know, surgeon, right? Otherwise, if it is not there, you can do simple cauterization just by, uh, you know, silver nitrate or potassium hydroxide or by, you know, laser or by, you know, ele uh, electrofulguration. This is umbilical polyp. This is? Umbilical 
granuloma. So this is just like, you know, granuloma pyogenicum only occurring in the umbilicus in the newborn, that's why we call it umbilical granuloma. So treatment is same like granuloma pyogenicum, cauterization. This is very common in your practice for all the pediatricians and many of the dermatologists of us, most of the dermatologists of us, if not all. We see such cases very often that, uh, you know, uh, the baby has got this type of presentation as well as hypopigmentation as you can see here. So this is infantile seborrheic dermatitis and in, you know, our skin of color it presents with hypopigmentation like this. You see erythema and which subsides and leaves behind hypopigmentation. This type of hypopigmentation. Parents often, particularly the mother, they become, you know, very much anxious. You have to do a lot of counseling. They look, this is not vitiligo. That is one single thing they want to know. Whether doctor, this is vitiligo or not. Right? So you have to tell them, look, it is not vitiligo. You can be rest assured. So this is intertrigo. And this is because of the diaper, known as diaper dermatitis, mechanical dermatitis, cleaning of the diaper, changing of the diaper repeatedly so that it doesn't come in contact with the urine and stool very frequently. That is the solution actually. Now there are super absorbent diaper which holds huge amount of urine and stool for long period of time. That type of advantage actually is being very advantageous for the working mother nowadays. So I am not touching upon therapy in most of the cases because during panel discussion we will have extensive discussion on that and I am sure that Dr. Manas Chatterjee has uh, kept his, uh, you know, gun ready because he is a brigadier. So gun ready, loaded with questions, okay. So this is not original gun though, don't. So this is a, a baby presenting with this type of lesions. Whenever you have any doubt, in a newborn or a small baby, for the diagnosis, search in one place, which in adult you don't get, umbilicus. Look at the umbilicus, right? So, this type of, you know, clustering of the lesions over the umbilicus occurs in the condition. Not only that, over the soles also, this type of vesicular lesions only occurs in newborn. What is the diagnosis? Baby cannot scratch, but the others are scratching. Neonatal scabies. Excellent. So you have to look at the umbilicus. There is a famous quote, my very quotable, my very favorite quotable quotes. If you ever tend to forget your mother, look at your umbilicus. So here you have to look at the umbilicus for making a diagnosis. Now, whenever you see colonization of the newborn skin by coagulase negative staph staphylococci, the staphylococcal epidermidis, that is normal. But the moment you see staph aureus, be careful that it has probably come either from the mother or from the nursing lady. That leads to infection. And this infection is known as impetigo bullosa. You can see a pus filled blister. Yellow color suggests pus. And impetigo bullosa, when ruptures or otherwise impetigo can present like crusted lesion like this, which is known as impetigo contagiosa. And this is the condition where exfoliating toxin from staph aureus exfoliates the large area of the skin. You have a confusion whether to give antibiotic or whether to give cyclosporine or steroid. That is the confusion. And that is a big confusion. It has got a lot of medical legal significance. So this is, immediately you should search for some areas, particularly around the nose, around the mouth, which is pus filled. That will give you a clue that this is staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome and not Steven Johnson or toxic epidermal necrolysis. So immediately you start antibiotic. That is very important and life saving. You can't waste time over here. So this is very common in pediatrician colleagues practice, we know uh, that uh, you see this type of moniliasis or as you call it thrush, oral thrush. We treat with topical application, 
of clotrimazole preparation, clotrimazole mouth paints. Such hypopigmented lesions, whenever you see in newborn, what diagnosis you make? Look at the morphology. Doesn't it appear a little bit elevated, scaly? Their petreous is versicolor, nothing else. And petreous is versicolor occurs in babies on the face, in adults never on the face. There is a reason. I am leaving this for Manas to ask this question. So nowadays in our Institute of Child Health, we have been seeing lots of such cases. Babies being brought with this type of glazed erythema over the palms and soles. Baby is febrile. What is the diagnosis? We ask two questions. Whether VDRL and HIV have been done in the baby and as well as the parents. It is congenital syphilis. Unfortunately, because of the rise of this, uh, you know, HIV cases over last one and a half decade or little more, we have been seeing a lot of cases of congenital syphilis. What we used to believe 10 years ago, that this is an entity which remains in the textbook. We never see this. So this is another case which is very interesting where you see uh, this baby was admitted in our institute, Institute of Child Health. With this type of lesion, hepatosplenomegaly, high fever, any diagnosis? This is neonatal toxoplasmosis. Actually, it was diagnosed, but you can see in any of the torch infections. And these are, ex these are called blueberry muffin lesions. These are extramedullary erythropoiesis. Seven days old baby with this type of lesions. Any diagnosis? This is purpura fulminans, as you can see here. Fresh frozen plasma is to be given because we don't get, you know, protein C or protein S. Even if you get it, it is very costly. This baby was admitted in our institute with these lesions, high fever and pneumonitis. And that was, that was my first, probably first week in Institute of Child Health. And uh, it, the baby has already received six days of antibiotic. There was no remission of fever neither pneumonia and when I said this is uh, generalized primary herpes in uh, babies nobody accepted that I showed them the jank smear then the baby was put on acyclovir the baby recovered the fever subsided in two days time skin lesion subsided in seven days time from that day I was installed as a pediatric dermatologist in Institute of Child Health. So this type of presentation is not very uncommon, you know, you have to look at the scalp and see whether there is any white tuft of hair and white patch, this is piebaldism. But please do remember that it is not only the hair and scalp, piebaldism can be there on the other parts of the body also. This is not very uncommon in our practice, baby presenting with these blueless lesions and there is nail, total destruction of the nails, anonychia. And because the baby was born by the forcep delivery, you can see the blisters over the areas where forcep has touched, you can make the diagnosis. What is that? Epidermolysis bullosa. So, most of you have seen a melanocytic nevus in a 5-6 year old child. However, how many of you have seen and in a new one, how does a melanocytic nevus look like? Just have an impression in your mind. Later on, it becomes like this. It's not exactly new one. This type of hair loss over the scalp, completely bald area, present since birth. What is the diagnosis? Aplasia cutis congenita and the single most important history you have to take from the mother when the mother was on anti thyroid drugs, methimazole or carbimazole. That is a very important history. Mothers taking methimazole or carbimazole, they have a chance of delivering such babies almost in 60 to 70 percent of the case. This type of babies presenting with the membrane is collodion baby and this is Harlequin fit as you know. Earlier writing Harlequin fit as diagnosis was just like earlier 33 decades ago writing the HIV diagnosis as if you were writing the death sentence of the patient. No, not now because of advent of discovery of a particular drug that is called retinoid. 
Now, 80% of the Harlequin babies are more or less they come back to their normal life. That is a big success story of dermatology practice. There are many such. So this is my last case in fact. So this baby presenting with this type of lesions over the scalp, around the eyes you can see. Slightly swollen eyes, lesions over the trunk, very very characteristic. Anybody? And you have to ask for two important tests in the mother as well as the baby. Anti-RO, anti-LA antibody. This is neonatal lupus at the moment. So thank you. All these pictures are from my color atlas of pediatric dermatologies. And this is the only book in the world which has gone up to fourth edition. And last year it got best book award from Federation of Publishers of India. Thank you very much. I am not on time, I believe. <laughs>